Today we will study how to paint beautiful watercolor roses on silk and you can easily repeat it yourself. But first a little exercise to control the wetness of the brush. We'll need a round elastic brush with a thin tip. First I soak the brush well, then I dry it well with a paper towel. And now the dye needs to be evenly distributed on the brush. And we try to draw straight lines for now. We check if the dye on the brush is enough, if it penetrates the fabric. And if we press the brush harder, how wide a line it leaves. Look, I have a dense curve de chine today uh, and it's a quite grainy, so the dye stays on the pigs. And you can also use this technique. We lightly touch the tip, increase the pressure and let go. And now that we understand how to distribute the dye with a dry brush, let's try adding a little water. Spread it evenly on the brush again. While there is a lot of paint on the brush, the line spreads out, but when we draw the second time, we can see that the brush has become drier. You'll definitely need a palette for this technique. And now you can add a little more water, literally in homeopathic doses. And when you feel that you can control the water a little bit, we can try to paint a rose. First, I spread the paint evenly on the brush, then dry it with a paper towel, and then I paint these semi-circles, arches, I don't know what to call them, but you see. So we start from the center of the rose, then I add a little water, you remember, in homeopathic doses, and continue to draw these semicircles. I make sure that the spacing between the strokes is not big enough. Sometimes the paint can spread and it will get lost, but it's okay. We keep adding water and keep painting the semicircles. And now we already have a rose. To make the center of the rose more contrasting, I add small accents with concentrated dye. And let's try it again. First with a dryer brush. See, here I have almost a dry brush. And if you paint with a slightly wetter brush, it just blurs. And the rose doesn't look like a rose, it looks like, like a cabbage. We are practicing And let's try it again. Uh, the brush is too dry this time and I'm going to add more dye. But it's still better to paint in the center with a much drier brush. And as you move away from the center, gradually make the brush wetter and increase the pressure of the brush to make the petals wider. And thus the center of the rose will be contrasting and hard and the edges soft and pale. To paint the leaves you can again try the wetness of the brush. And now we will make the task a little more difficult. 
if you again run the already painted strip but with a wet brush the strip will spread a lot and if you dry a bit the same brush you can make part of the strip darker without the risk of losing its outline or almost <laughs> no risk now you can see on the palette quite dry dye uh, because on the palette water from dye evaporates very quickly And if you put just a little bit of water on the palette and first touch the silk only with the tip of the brush, increase the pressure, we can, we can already create a leaf. Here's a drop slipped off the top of the brush. Well, it happens. Honestly, I hate the shaky camera, but I really want to show you everything with all the details. Uh, but let's do it again. Tip, pressure, tip. You've got a leaf. And you can add a tip to make the leaf more oblong. And also you can add some red to the green. It'll bring the two colors together a little bit and you can draw it next to the green. And now the leaf will be more lively. While the leaves are wet, you can add a little depth to them with a drier brush with undiluted color. Hopefully by now you've gotten used to the way the paint flows over your silk and have learned a little bit about water control. So let's combine the rows with the leaves. And at the end I'm going to show a more advanced version of how to do the veins on the leaves. I suggest repeating everything again. So I wash the brush, dry, pick up the dye, dry, Draw the center of the rose. Add some little water to the tip of the brush. Dry. Continue to paint the petals. Add more water. Dry. Draw further petals. Water again without drying expand the radius. You see, everything is simple enough. You will quickly get a sense of where and how much to dry the brush. The most important thing is to practice. Let's say that here we will pass the stem. Now I paint the leaves a little bit different. It's just the way it goes. Uh, but you get a chance to see a different way. And here the leaf has started to spread wide. You can just take a paper towel and stop the spreading. While I was painting the leaves, the rose had time to dry a bit and I would like to liven it up, add some accents. And even with color green to make it look more organic with the leaves, And you can also add a little pink to the leaves. It will make our image look more whole and professional. Just small, delicate flags. 
Then there's the final detailing. Now we get a completely dry brush and we can proceed to the veins on the leaves. Closer to the center of the leaf, you can make them wider. And look how beautifully the pink color plays here. In general, this technique is very similar to watercolor. I hope you've learned to get a better feel for water control. So share, subscribe and enjoy. Anyway, I wish you success and see you next time.